Hi. My name is Tony Montefesco. I'm here to give you a program today on clock repivoting. It's a problem a lot of people seem to have, and I'd like to show you what my procedure is of successfully putting a pivot onto a, a broken arbor. There are no more serious problems and defects with a clock than a worn out pivot or a scored pivot or a bent pivot and worn out bushings. To do a successful clock job, you should be able to do this job pretty well. I made up some drawings to show you exactly what I'm trying to do here for you today. Here's a very, very bad worn pivot. The center of the pivot is worn out. It's so big in the, in the hole that it's virtually useless in the clock. But in my estimation, that pivot should be cut off and re-drilled out and replaced by a new pivot. So now, now is our time to take our, to take our measurements of the pivot. We take down the measurement of our pivot, and I'd like you to write it down on a, on a sheet of paper, so that as you're going along doing your work, you won't forget what your dimensions are. Now we selected a new pivot wire, that's the one here. What I'd like you to do is select one that's slightly larger than the pivot that you just measured. I'd like you to measure the length of the pivot and the diameter of the pivot. When you select your pivot size, I like you to select it about a thousandth or a thousandth and a half larger than the existing pivot. That if the pivot was 50 thousandths in diameter, I like you to select one that's 51, 51 and a half thousandths. And I'll explain that a little later on as we go along. I like you to put a little taper on the end of the pivot. So give us some sort of a pilot when we line it up with the hole that we're going to drill in the arbor. Now we're ready to cut off the old pivot. What I like you to do is leave a slight trace of the old pivot for a guide so that we have some idea of where the location of the original pivot was. I'll bring this in a little bit for you. I left a little shadow on the drawing to show you exactly what I, what I mean by leaving a small, small trace of the old pivot. It's nice to have the location of the original pivot. Now as we're cutting off this pivot, the lathe is turning in this direction of its going. And as you come across with your cutter, you're going to come across, you're going to come into the center. And a lot of the problems some of the people have is spotting the center so that the pivot is true center to the arbor. As you're coming along with your cutter and you're coming to the center, it automatically spots the center right there. If you continue to go on with your cutter, you just continue to make the circles that you've already made. So as we come across here, We've already practically spotted our center.
Now we're ready to fire, Senator. The way I'd like you to do that is set up your T-rest on your lathe. And with a carbide graver, nice and sharp, like all your tools should be. Your tools should always be sharp. You can't work with dull tools. A nice sharp graver. And lay it as close as you can to the arbor. Now the trick to this is turn your lathe in reverse. If you have a switch on it, switch it to the reversed angle where we make the lathe go backwards. If you don't have a switch, what you can do is take your belt off your pulley and twist it and put it back on. That'll make your lathe go into reverse. With your carbide graver, with the flat side facing you up, the lathe goes in a reverse motion and it'll come and it'll cut that little dimple that we're looking for here. I don't want a big hole, I just want a little small dimple so that we can have a guide for the drill. I just want a very, very, very small dimple right there, right in the center of the arbor. And as your lathe is turning around, turning the arbor, and you hit it with your graver, it'll automatically find that center that you already made when you cut off the pivot. It's not a very difficult job to do, but with a little practice, it comes easier each time. I would like to say at this point, if you've never done any repivoting before, I urge you to practice it on a little scrap piece of metal something in a small diameter of 1 16th, 1 32nd of an inch, 3 16th of an inch, where you can, where you can get a little technique of, of drilling and cutting so that you can do a satisfactory job for yourself. Practice makes perfect. Now we're ready to drill out our old pivot. What I'd like you to do here as you're drilling the pivot, I want you to come in I want you to come in one and a half times the length of the pivot, that you just measurement you just took. What I like to do is I take my drill and I set it up on my tail stop and I measure the distance that I want to go and I lock it in air so that when I come in here to make my drill, to make my hole, I already have the measurements that I need. I don't need some sophisticated equipment and measuring devices to, to find out what my depth is going to be. What I don't want you to do is take your drill and come and make it with one clean cut. What's going to happen here is your drill is going to get hot, it's going to burnish off the end of it, it's going to get dull, and you're not going to get a straight hole. What I want you to do is I want you to come in, make a little cut, come out, clean off your chips, go in again, come out, clean off your chips, and just keep going in and out, in and out, until you reach that depth that you wanted. You can't cut it all in one, one cut. It just heats up the drill too much and you don't have a nice clean hole. Now we're ready to drive in our new pivot. We already have the wire selected. We have a taper on the end of it. Set it up in your tail stock. Tighten it up good and tight. And with, with a fiber hammer or a brad hammer, just tap it lightly until you've tapped it in where she got hit the bottom. Now when you cut off your pivot, I like you to leave it a little bit longer so that when we get ready to dress it off, we'll have enough room to round off the end of the tip. Now we have our new pivot in place. And we 
are satisfied with what we've done so far. The new pivot is already in place. We have it cut approximately to the right dimension. We just left it a little bit longer. So now we can go ahead and we can we can turn this arbor down, this pivot down, I'm sorry, to the dimension close to what we had. We had a 50,000 size pivot. We selected a wire 51 and a half thousand. So we can turn this down with our cutter on our lathe to approximately somewhere around 15 and a half thousandths or 15 and a quarter thousandths or something like that. Finish off your end. You can do it with a file or with an Indian stone, Arkansas stone. When we get it down pretty close to what we want, now's the time to burnish to pivot off. Get rid of our cuttings that we made with our with our lathe. Take your take your burnishing tool, put a little drop of oil on it, and run it underneath your pivot, back and forth, back and forth, until you've cleared out all the markings from the cutting, because you've got a nice smooth surface. Once we have all the cuttings taken out, we take our Arkansas stone or our Indian stone, again with a little drop of oil on it, set it up underneath the, the pivot, run it back and forth, back and forth until we, we ground it down to the size we want it. As you come around, come around to the end so you can round off the end with it and cut both sides. Cut the pivot and cut the end. Make it nice and round, nice and smooth till we get it down to 50 thousand. Once we had that, we had to pivot off, all finished, and we're ready for to put it in the clock. Now, on some clocks, like our our English and our French and our German, some of our German clocks, they require a high mirror type finish on them. What we do there is we take a piece of pegwood, scoop out a little end of it so that we can gather up some diamantine powder. I, I take my powder and I mix it with a little oil and make a paste out of it. I pick it up, put it on my pegwood, and I run it back and forth, back and forth at a very, very high speed now until I get the desired finish that I'm looking for. If I'm looking for a mirror finish, that's what I work for. If I need a nice high polish finish, that's what I work for and your diamond tea powder will do that for you. Now I'm going to do this on the lathe for you as well, so I can just, I can show you exactly what we, what we talked about here, but I hope that the drawings helped you. So this completes the portion of the drawings, and now I'll take you to the lathe and we'll do the whole thing on the lathe for you. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. I'll show you some tools for this job. A nice assortment of drills. A nice assortment of pivot wire. A burnishing tool some oil stones, an Arkansas stone, and an Indian stone, a small set of needle files, a hand graver, carbide, some clock oil, some peg wood, diamantine powder, a micrometer, a machinist ruler, and a nice assortment of chucks. Along with the chucks, a nice assortment of cutters.
There you go. You can see them a little bit better that way. A nice assortment of cutters so that you have the proper tools to do the job. And of course, a, little, a small lathe. Now the first thing I want you to do, I'll get in a little closer here so you can see, is to center your cutter with the center point of your lathe so that when you're making your cuts, your cuts will be nice and true. Your, your cutter is lined up with your center point. And it's a pretty good shot there. Now, as I told you in the beginning, I'd like you to practice this on a piece of scrap metal. If you've never done any repivoting before, I urge you to do some practicing before you start working on a clock pivot. Develop a little technique in drilling and cutting. I have a piece of scrap metal here. I'll give you some idea of what I'm talking about. It doesn't have to be anything special. Just so that it's a round piece of steel, something in small dimensions, sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch, three sixteenths, something in that nature, so that you have some time to practice on it. And you cut her into your piece that you're going to cut. Turn your lathe at a moderate speed and prepare to cut. We're coming into the into the metal. You proceed nice and slowly till you get to the center. When you get to the center, we practically spotted, I'll bring this back a little bit, we've practically spotted our center already. As you can see here, I have a, a small pivot or a piece of metal just hanging there. That's going to be our center. So I'll come in and I'll just finish cutting that off. When I talk about spotting centers, this is what I'm talking about. See the markings that the drill, the cutter is made? So we're practically spotted right there. I want you to practice this, not once or twice, but a number of times, so that you develop your technique and so that you're assured that you can, you can drill without any problem. Now there's no pivot left on this wheel to measure. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my measurements off at the opposite end. Using my machinist ruler, I'll measure the length of it. 
The length here reads 3 30 seconds of an inch. I write that down on a piece of paper. With my micrometer, I measure the diameter. The diameter measures 50 thousandths. I write that down on a piece of paper. Because as you're going along doing your work, your mind is focused on what you're doing and you forget what your figures were. So I like to write them down so we don't make any mistakes. I check up my wheel. And what's left is a pinion, I'll take off. And you cut her in. And what I want to do, I'm going to leave a little bit of the whole pivot so I can see where our markings were. Turn your light at a moderate speed and prepare to cut it off. As I'm cutting it off, I'm getting to the center, which I've already spotted. <laughs> Remarkable how your drill will do a lot of work for you. Now there is the center where the shadows of my cuttings are. It just made a circle right to the middle. Now that we have this cut off and we have our measurements, we select our wire and our drill, which I've already done. Our pivot wire, I selected that so it would save a little time, and I've selected my drill. I like to put a little, a little taper on your pivot wire, so that you can enter it in your hole that you're going to make here. What I like to do, I take my green stone, I take my green stone, I take my, temp, my pivot wire that I've already selected, and I put a little taper just enough to enter it into the hole that I can have a nice tight fit. That's about all you need on the taper. Good time to do this is after you take your measurements so you don't have to come back and forth like I'm doing here. Now what I want to do, I want to spot my center. I take my T-rest. it up close to my eye arbor. With my hand graver and this flat portion facing me, we're going to spot the center. First you turn your lathe in the reverse position, hold your graver to the center where the mark is, and just put a little dimple in there. Just like that. That's all I want. There's a little bit of a mark there, which will 
start my drill. That's all we need to spot the center. We don't need a hole or we don't need anything that of big dimensions. Just a small dimple. Now when I put my drill in my chuck to drill this, my depth measurements were 330 seconds of an inch. When I set my drill into my chuck, I will set it to slightly deeper than my 330 seconds. I want to go in three and a half, half time, <clears throat> excuse me, three and a half times the length of the pivot. That's 330 seconds, 630 seconds, 930 seconds. Right, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it 1030 seconds just to give myself a little bit more room. And that's the depth that I want to go when I do my drilling. Now bring your, put your lathe back in the forward position. Put your drill mounted in your tailstock. Line it up with your dimple and lock it in place. Now the drill should be Good and sharp, like all your tools. You don't want to work with dull tools. Turn your lathe at a moderate speed and come in to drill. Check and see that you're you're on center and proceed to drill. Just keep knocking the chips off. Go in and out. Drill is nice and sharp. The lubrication from your fingers will be enough to lubricate it. Just keep drilling it until you get one and a half times the length of the pivot. We're getting very close here. We're getting right to the end of my drill. Okay. That looks pretty good there. That's a nice clean hole. Looks like it's well centered. Remove my drill from my tailstock. And I'll insert my pivot wire. Now in selecting my pivot wire, I selected it just a little bit larger than the existing pivot. So it will give me some room to dress it off. Our pivot was 50 thousandths. I selected a wire of 50 one and a half thousandths, which would give me one and a half thousandths room to dress it off. I line it up with my hole. Tighten up my tail stock. With, with my fiber hammer and brass hammer, I'll tap the pivot into position. Sounded like it went home. We 
loosen up your tail stock. That's pretty tight. Okay. Now what I want to do, I know what the length of my pivot was. So I'm going to mark it so that we can cut it off. That's my it was 3.30 in length. So I'm going to make this just a little bit longer to give me some dressing room. I'll make it 4.30 seconds. And I'll mark it right there. I'll put in my cutter. And where I made the mark, I will I will score it. do take a pair of snip pliers and I, and I snip them off and that gives me a rough edge but I've got a lot of room to dress it off the first thing I want to do I'm going to measure the size of it because it's oversized Still at 51 and a half thousandths. I'm going to dress that down just a little bit. Turn my light at a fairly moderate speed. Go in and out. Take small cuts at a time. Don't cut it too deep. Take another measurement. I'm reading 15 and a quarter thousand. So I think I'll just leave it right there. That'll still give me a little bit more room to do what I have to do. Now with that end that I cut off with the snip pliers. I'll finish it off with a file so I can round it off. Now with my burnishing tool, I'll burnish off some of the filings and the cuttings that I had. I'll put a little drop of oil on it. I 
and I'll just run this back and forth until I get all the cuttings off and I have a nice smooth finish. Take my pit wood and I can clean off the oil. See what kind of a finish I have. Can use a little bit more there. Got some markings in there yet. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I know the side was a quarter of a thousand larger yet. I'm gonna, now I'm going to bring it down to 50 thousandths. With a drop of oil on my Indian stone. Now I'm down to 50 thousandths. Now in some clocks, like your French and German and English clocks, they require a high polish on our pivot. And the way we do that is we use our diamantine powder and our peg wood, and we make up a paste. I usually take, I put a couple of drops, drops of oil in the cover, pick up a little diamond team powder, and make a paste out of it. When you take your peg wood, take your, your knife or your razor blade and just make a little scoop in there, like it's a little shovel. Can you see that? Dip that into your paste. Now to finish off, you have to run your lathe at a pretty high speed to get the polish and finish your life. Now you can do that until you, you acquire the finish that you desire. And that makes for a nice, a nice re-pivot job here. Mm -hmm. Pivots in place. Now some people ask me, what do you do when you have a large wheel, something that's not close to the to the chuck? I don't know if you can see that now. But we finished off a pretty nice looking pivot there. It didn't take that long to do, did it?
Now, in the event that you have a long wheel, say something like this, and you want to put a pivot on this end, and you've got a very short shank here, what do you do in that case? Larger chuck here. I like to make a lot of tools for the jobs that I need. I know there are center rests and there's a lot of things you can buy, but I made this little tool up and I call it dial a hole. It has just a plain piece of steel. I've t slotted at the bottom to accept the, the bolt in my bed. And I put a, a round brass disc on it with a number of a variety of holes. I slide that in my my T rest. I dial a hole that I'm looking for. There we go. Now I have a nice, firm, steady piece so that my, my big piece isn't going to wobble on me. My wheel's a little bit bent, straighten that out, but my arbor runs nice and true. And when I come in with my drill, I can come right in and I can drill it the way it goes. This concludes the portion of the laid work. I hope I've had some help to you. I wish you good luck in your success of using this procedure and some of your future clock repivoting jobs that you have to do. Thank you for coming. <laughs>